Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today, of course, this evening is Friday evening. And as I said this morning, we are remembering St. Ninian, uh, this uh, Br the apostle to the British Isles, uh, the northern part of Britain. And uh, of course, we continue our, our mourning as a country for the passing of our Queen. The long queues in London of people who are going to, to pay their respect um, to her, um, uh, at least to her body that is lying in state in Westminster Hall. Monday morning, well, Monday is the funeral, and in the meantime, we continue to remember her and pray for the family and pray for our king, our new king, as he takes up his role, his new role, as king of the United Kingdom. So let's pray. Oh God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be god forever amen that this evening may be holy good and peaceful let us pray with one heart and mind as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our canticle from Romans chapter 4. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ, we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore, we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Fear not. For, forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. 
be not far from me, O oh my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the collect for this evening, heal us, O God, from all our afflictions, and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death, and lead us to fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Collect for St. Ninian, Bishop of Galloway, Apostle of the Picts. Almighty and everlasting God, who called your servant Ninian to preach the gospel to the people of Northern Britain, raise up in this and every land heralds and evangelists of your kingdom that your church may make known the immeasurable riches of your son our savior jesus christ amen come my light and illumine my darkness come my life and revive me from death come my physician and heal my wounds Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flame of your love. Come, my King, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there, for you alone are my King and my Lord. Amen. And our psalm this evening is Psalm 145 Psalm 145 Psalm 145 First the refrain Great is the Lord and highly to be praised I will exalt you O God my king and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvelous acts, and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness, and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. 
The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who, he who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. And the, the prayer, King of the universe, you show the bright glory of your reign in acts of mercy and enduring love. Raise the spirits of the downcast and restore those who have fallen away that we may sing forever of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I will read the meditation for, for that psalm, Psalm 145. Consider the great variety of words this psalm uses for praising God. Extol, bless, praise, commend, speak of, pour forth, sing aloud, give thanks, make known. As the psalmist ponders the Lord's lavish goodness, praise pours out, pours out. He cannot hold it in. Praise of God is not meant to be something we drag ourselves to do. It is not a mechanical exercise done to fulfill a duty. It is rather the natural response to a glimpse of God. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Verse 8. The Lord upholds all who are fallen and raises up all who are bowed down. Verse 14. Do you flinch at these statements? Certain that your life is too difficult, too far beyond the reach of God's kindness? Reconsider. Ponder the proof God has given us, the grace of God that this psalm extols burst into human history in the form of a man 2,000 years ago. This man went to a cross and rose again. He secured God's mercy for you, despite the fact that he had every reason not to be good to you. The ministry of Jesus on behalf of sinners and sufferers means you are safe. In Christ you cannot lose. Even your pain will ultimately be transformed into your own glory and triumph. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 21. So let his goodness wash afresh into your heart. Let your lips praise him accordingly. Amen. All right. Old Testament reading first which is um, Zechariah. We are now in Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 and, we, and, and to the very end of chapter 2. So Zechariah, which is one of the minor prophets. Um, this is after Haggai. <laughs> you, know, you say, where is that? Well, it's after Habakkuk, which is after Micah and so on. Jonah and, and, and so forth. So find Jonah and then keep going you find Zechariah just before you get to Matthew in the New Testament. So that's where we are. Zechariah, I know many people don't know where these parts of the Bible are because these names are foreign to most Christians. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 to chapter 2. 
Then I looked up, and before and there before me were four horns. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, Who are these? He answered me, These are the horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. I asked, What are these coming to do? He answered, These are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one could raise their head. But the craftsmen have come to terrify them and throw down these horns of the nations who lift up who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter his people then i looked up and there before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand i asked where are you going he answered me to measure jerusalem to find out how wide and how long it is. And while the angel who was speaking to me was leaving, another angel came to meet him and said to him, Run, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals in it. And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord and I will be its glory within. Come, come, flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord, for I have scattered you to the four winds of heaven, declares the Lord. Come, Zion, escape you who live in daughter Babylon, for this is what the Lord Almighty says. After the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you. For whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. I will surely raise my hand against them so that their slaves will plunder them. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me. Shout and be glad, daughter Zion, for I am coming. And I will live among you, declares the Lord. Many nations will be joined with the Lord in that day and will become my people. I will live among you and you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be still before the Lord, all mankind, because he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Amen. This is a prophecy, sisters and brothers, of course, of the, the new kingdom, the heaven and earth, the place where God is going to dwell with his people. Jerusalem is going to be a city without walls. In other words, it's going to be the people of God, the that the whole world will be Jerusalem and um, and and so on so this is uh, this is future prophecy that Zechariah is seeing it it'd be wonderful to dig deep into these prophecies but alas we don't have the time in the evenings to do that but one day in a Bible study we will get the chance Mark chapter 8 is our, uh, well, Mark chapter 9 is our New Testament reading. Mark chapter 9 from verse 14 to 29. Mark chapter 9 from verse 14 to When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? 
he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, <coughs> it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on him and help us. Take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus, after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him immediately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. Amen. All right, there is what the, there's an I think the fundamental lesson, interesting, to learn from this story is that very end, is at that very end where, where the disciples say, Why couldn't we do it? <laughs> Jesus said, This kind can come out only by prayer. And 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 the tr the the truth there is that Jesus is teaching us that there are certain problems that are so entrenched in our lives that only intensive earnest prayer can can dispel those problems sisters and brothers there are certain problems that that frankly um most most of us can 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 sort out ourselves some of the things that we go through in lives, some of them are a result of, 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 of decisions we make, wrong decisions, wrong, wrong path that we have traveling. And all it takes for us is for us to change our course of action. You know, we need God to guide us, but we don't need any great intensive prayer or, or earnest prayer. Remember in James, in the morning reading, we, we, we heard that the church earnestly prayed for, for for Peter while he was in prison there is that there is that kind of a prayer that we need to pray for certain entrenched problems in our lives Jesus is saying this demon was so deep into this person's life that the only way we are going to you are going to be able to dispel that demon is through intensive prayer in fact the early church um added and fasting if if you have the old king james version it would say and fasting because in the early church um intensive prayer prayer earnest prayer 
was coupled with fasting. You know, real prayer, prayer in its in its most intensive sense, the kind of prayer you could say that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, where his sweat became drops of blood. That kind of prayer in the Christian life, the early church fathers associated it with fasting because when you are praying in that intensive way, you don't want to eat. You want to spend the time, the day, the hours, the day, the days, the weeks in prayer. And food become something that's of a luxury. It's not something that is not necessary because you are so intense in your prayer. Jesus says there are certain, certain problems in our world, in our lives, certain demons you could say that are so entrenched in our world, in our lives, in people we know, that the only way those demons are going to be dispersed, expelled, is through prayer. That is not just the casual prayer, but intensive, earnest, all-night prayer vigil. Um, that kind of a prayer. That is a prayer that we hardly pray anymore. Hence, why we are not seeing many of the demons in our lives, in our society, dispelled, expelled, because this kind of intensive prayer, that is, as the early church fathers recognized, is coupled with fasting, is not happening as much anymore in the church. I was saying to, my, to, to, to some of our members yesterday that the days of all-night prayer meetings, uh, where are those days? What has happened to Christians meeting and praying all night, as it were, or from, from, from 7 o'clock until midnight? We are on our knees like James, the camel's knees, and, and praying intensive earnest prayer for our world for the for the demons in our society to be expelled jesus said to the disciples this kind can only come out by prayer by prayer but not just the ordinary prayer by intensive prayer and as the church fathers say not just prayer but prayer and fasting prayer that is so intensive it requires time with God alone, without food, without anything else. May God give us grace to spend that kind of time in that kind of prayer. To see the demons in our lives, the demons in our society, the demons in our world, expelled through the power of prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we can come to you in earnest prayer, seeking salvation, deliverance for our world, for those we know who are, who are trapped by the demons of, of this world, by the enemy. Lord, give us grace to pray for them, to pray for our world so that we will see demons expelled, we will see people delivered from their addictions, from, their, uh, from the evil that binds them. And so, Lord, we pray that you will give us, give your church a desire to pray earnestly, to pray and fast, to pray so that we can see your action in the world through prayer. Lord Jesus, oh God, you have ordained that this is the way you are going to rule this world, through the prayer of your people. May we be a prayerful people, so that we can see your rule right before our eyes, um, being demonstrated right before our eyes, we pray. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't have much time, but we continue to pray for those on our hearts. We pray for those who are sick. I pray as we continue to pray for David, our brother, uh, and pray for our sister Hannah in hospital. And um, we pray for others that are on our hearts. Uh, remember, um, I want to pray for, for Yvonne today, who's, who went to the hospital for, for tests and so on. I pray that God will, will, will guide those making the tests, that God will show them that there's nothing wrong and that, that she will be fine. And so Lord, I pray for Yvonne. I pray that she will be made whole by the power of your gospel. We pray for Sue. We pray for Jane pray for comfort, pray um, for Mokund, pray for Daphne, Pauline's mom, and of course we pray for those who are bereaved. We remember uh, Dolly and Veronica and Angela. We also I pray for Rona and Auntie Janie and, and, and Auntie Deli, Auntie Deli, as they mourn the passing of their loved one as well and we pray for Doreen and uh, we pray for Muriel as well David and Bernadette Hoyt Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and uh, just pray as well the collect um, for our Queen gracious God we give you thanks for the life of your servant Queen Elizabeth for her faith and her dedication to duty. Bless our nation as we mourn her death and may her example continue to inspire us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give you thanks for her love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and the nations of the Commonwealth, for her grace, dignity and courtesy and for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times, the depth and of her Christian faith, and the witness she bore to it in word and deed. And we pray for our new king, Charles III. Bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help him to be a wise counsel to those who hold power in our country. Help us to work together so that truth and justice Harmony and fairness flourish among us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our night night prayer guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord give you rest and peace tonight, sisters and brothers. Rest from all the anxieties of this world, the worries and cares of this world. May the Lord give you his, his everlasting peace to sustain you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.